I have Dr. Rohan Sikwera joining me on this conversation. He's a cardiometabolic physician at Just Slok Hospital, and I'm, uh, you know, and he's a busy, busy guy right now because he's part <laughs> of, uh, you know, the frontline fight that India is putting up uh, against this virus. I also want to now ask you a couple of facts that are doing the rounds. I know some things that people are worried about, and if you could clear some things up for us, that would be great. Uh, there's one article that says, and people have panicked about it, that this disease may be airborne as well, that the WHO is looking at that data, and so we should all wear masks and we should all be careful. Um, how much this has not, Yeah, this has not yet been proven. There was just one study which has happened so far. And they did find that there was a possibility of the virus being airborne up to eight hours. But that was only under a certain condition and doesn't usually apply to the general public. Uh, they had certain areas in which they did that study. I don't want to go too much into detail in the study because then people will just get panicked about it. But there is no proof as of yet that it is 100% airborne. There has also been another study that shows that patients who were uh, COVID positive treated got COVID negative and were discharged from the hospital, in these discharged COVID negative patients, they found the stool samples to be positive for Corona after five days. So there is a suggestion that it could also be a FECO oral route of transmission. There's also a suggestion that it could be an aerobone route of transmission. I would recommend that these are just certain studies which are under certain controlled population where maybe sometimes the viral load in that person is too high so I would not give too much of you know strength to these studies until and unless the WHO or an authorized agency actually declares an information that we search. There's also you know, another been, uh, yes a, yeah, a train of please. thought that uh, that basically eating non-vegetarian food right now is not advisable and you should just avoid meat, fish, chicken, that sort of thing. Is that <laughs> something that you agree with? No, no. There's no there's no evidence that you know uh, vegetarian or non-vegetarian food is better. All forms of food, depending on each person's dietary restrictions, can be continued without any problem. But can like I said, uh, yes, technically sorry. all foods have to be, the one restriction is all foods need to be cooked properly. Undercooked food, which has been handled by people who are unknown, can be a source of transmission, especially vegetables. Uh, it's advised to soak them in a slightly saline solution of warm water where the salinity can actually cause, you know, the, the, the vegetables, for example, just dissolve some salt in, don't wash them with uh, antiseptic because that's not going to taste well, but, you know, put some salt in some hot water and soak your vegetables for a while in that and then take them off. That should usually help to disinfect them. Would that uh, then apply to, say, bread or any other foods that we bring from outside? Bread is, unless, unless your bread is open, I wouldn't advise, I don't think bread uh, is available in the open form so far, but if it's a packaged bread, I think those are usually made under hygienic conditions. Right. Uh, what about ordering food from restaurants to have it delivered? Is that something we should worry about? Or is it... I would not be able to you know, advise older patients, especially because I do not have any control over the food manufacturing setup right now. I do not know who's cooking the food right now. And especially if I'm a vulnerable group, like an elderly group, then I would be a little bit worried about that. You know, so especially in my house, you know, my family, I've not allowed them to order in the online food, not that I don't want to. But the grocery stores which are supplying food for you in a packaged form, those should be fine. Um, also, there's some question about pets that, uh, you know, there was there was a notice put out, in fact, by our own BMC that they, they then withdrew it, but it caused some panic that our pets are carriers of the disease or our dogs are giving us the disease. There's no research that, that confirms that, is there? there? There is no research. There is some evidence that says that we could have got this as a zoonotic transmission from bats to human beings, but... There is so far, as of today, there is no evidence that there's an animal-human transmission. In fact, uh, I had some of my own colleagues tell me that they have bats which live in these buildings in Bombay because Bombay has got a lot of bats. I'm in Mumbai, sorry. Yes. Mumbai has got a lot of lot of bats around, which you see them at 7 o'clock. So I actually had patients come up to me and ask me, this, in fact, one of my patients asked me, he, he's a 75-year-old patient of mine. He used to live in the US, he's in India. He was so concerned because just next to his window, there is a fig tree. You know, you have these wild fig trees in Mumbai. Yes. And bats, bats root this tree at night, in that tree at night. So he was so petrified. He said, I know it came from bats. Will I be able to get it? So as far as uh, the transmission is concerned, till today, I don't think they have any evidence that there is an animal to human transmission. All this right, is one of the few times where humans are more dangerous. 
<laughs> so, so it's, it's okay to hang out with your dogs. Uh, you don't have to social distance from your pets, at least right now. That's what we know. No. Dr. Sequera, thank no. you so much, first of all, for all the work that you're doing and uh, the service that you're, you're rendering right now to society and to the country. We are so, so grateful. Please stay safe and uh, stay healthy. And all of our gratitude and our love to you. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. You are also doing a wonderful job. All of you in the media, hats off to you because you are out there just with us fighting this together and, you know, you're bringing the right information to the right people and we are so grateful to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was really helpful. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.